Welcome back to Our Issues Milwaukee. I'm your host, Andrea Williams. April is National Poetry Month, and it's considered one of the largest literary celebrations in the world, with tens of millions of readers, students, teachers, librarians, and of course, poets marking poetry's important place in our culture and our lives. My next guest is a writer, performer, and nationally recognized poet. She's the founder of Stillwaters Collective, and she's traveled all over the world expressing herself through poetry. Dasha Kelly Hamilton is here to tell us about a very special performance that she's got coming up at the Market Center for the Performing Arts. Hi, Dasha. Hi there. How are you? I am fantastic. It's great I to see you. I am so excited to have you here. Mm -hmm. You've done so much in the world of poetry, and I just mentioned that you're the founder of Stillwaters Collective. Mm -hmm. So if you would, tell us more about it. Sure. Stillwaters Collective is an outreach initiative where we use creative writing and spoken word as tools to build community and we build capacity and we build confidences. So I like to put it in that order so it's less about converting everyone into a poet, although that is, of course, my <laughs> secret goal, but more using the process of shrug shoulders and a blank piece of paper to end up with some clarity to get people to some reflection and really excitedly to let them see just from the process of scribbling a poem they're already amazing. This ah. one thing they probably thought they could never or would never do, they do it quite famously and all the way to the end and that little bit of gust takes them to the next thing they think I they can't that. do. that. So you started this back in the day at the Mecca, At right? the Mecca. <laughs> <laughs> How many years ago was that? Uh, we are in our 19th season. Wow. That is season. pretty special. So mm -hmm. uh, you started uh, kind of turning your focus to students mm -hmm. and young people, giving them the opportunity to get involved uh, and actually taking your services to area schools. Mm -hmm. So uh, talk about some of the things you do when you go to schools. Sure. And initially it was the invitation, hey, we heard you were a real writer. Can you come to our classroom? <laughs> a, real a real writer, right? <laughs> um, so how we're able to be supportive in the classroom. So mm -hmm. one class became a school, became three schools, became one too many places for me to be at the same time, although I tried really, really, really hard. <laughs> so over time it was um, the young people who had been in these classrooms, we provide training for them to become the facilitators. And so now it's we're able to go into a school and do a one week residency. We've done full day, um, take the students out of the classroom and we have this flow right retreat where it's all about their imagination. It's all about um, getting people of all ages comfortable with their voice and not afraid of the idea of expressing themselves. So mm -hmm. it's one-time workshops, it's poetry slams, we've been taking young people to international competitions and wow. just to see a 15-year-old on a stage um, spitting their truth from why are we eating mock chicken legs to <laughs> why does my mother not understand me to why is the world this way to why won't he call me back to wow. all of their wonderful questions. So that's the beautiful thing about poetry. You can express anything that crosses your mind Everything. and I'm sure that it has really helped a lot of people who find themselves kind of harboring thoughts and feelings but being able to express it in words and then express their truth in front of an audience mm -hmm. has to be pretty amazing right it's profound and I always say I love to see how the room shrinks so you have this person you and you've worked all this time on this particular piece of art mm -hmm. which is capturing whatever this one moment is for you that you struggled with or you're celebrating and they get into a space and you have other humans who can relate mm. or who've been there or who've never been there but have a different empathy. Um, I often use the example, I was at an event and a young person did a poem about Tourette's, which I only knew as a cursing disease. Mm. And watching him, he goes, did you see that? You know, my body betrays me sometimes. And the whole piece was how he was managing his twitches. And in that poem, I had this empathy, I learned something. And he's in a room of 600 other teenagers who have their own set of things. And I've seen it work with grown folks too. <laughs> you know, we all have bills and heartache and yeah, things we're yeah, working yeah. through. Yeah, and you actually offer employment and leadership development and uh, career programs for your alumni that mm -hmm. come through your program. So they're between the ages of 18 and 25. Mm -hmm. So what kind of uh, jobs are they able to get after working with you? So we're able to get them confident in how to move through the city. One mm -hmm. of the things we're really excited about is we've had a fellowship and these are, I call them their neo-grown, where <laughs> all the plans you have, you've taken the classes, you understand generally how the world works through Google and now you're actually paying bills and you're actually going to meetings and setting up coffees and figuring out 
all these things, I, these plans I had on paper, how would that really translate? And then I show up to a reception, I'm the youngest person or the only person of color or I'm the artsy one in a room full of suits. How do I, at 19, 20, 22, make sense of that? It's mm -hmm. hard for 22 and beyond sometimes. So they were very clear about their place and their voice. They're specifically able to be hired to go into the classroom. So when we get a request from a school for a residency, we have a team of, of teaching artists now who are, they get contracted, you're gonna be at this school for these many days, these are the grades, um, let's talk through which curriculum we're going to use, and then they are the, they manage that classroom. Wow. So there are performances that happen, we get calls on a regular basis. Do you have anyone that can do a workshop <laughs> about, uh, about hunger, that can do a poem about food deserts you have anyone that has a piece about siblings and we're really excited to be able to pass that on to these young people who are less young um, but definitely their voices are, are ready to be heard and yeah. for them to have that experience I love standing in the back and watching the applause watching them get swarmed after an event um, because a lot of times it, the, the the paths that we lead feel they look magical from a distance you know mm -hmm. think of everyone you've admired um, and everything that thought maybe one day could happen for me so I've learned over this time telling people and encouraging folks and even laying down the pathway is not the same as taking a pair of feet putting them on that path and then just watching where they go it's not for everyone but we're glad that they're able to they're able to make some work from it man it's just amazing to uh, watch you what 19 years ago you plant a seed and mm -hmm. then it continues to bloom and grow and uh, you're really just getting started right, right. <laughs> Because now it's like on purpose, so yeah, that to yeah, really yeah. be organic about, I've always I've been obedient to this journey that has made no sense. But in every step, I knew that I needed to be right here. I don't know why I'm going on tour. I don't know why I'm making this trip. I don't know why I'm writing this thing or doing this project. And now looking over my shoulder, all of those dots are a really clear constellation. So it's definitely been a testament of trusting what you don't know, mm -hmm. but being committed to what you are and yeah. who you are. And I think everything that you're saying is really uh, a testament to people who feel that every single day and they really don't take the time to think through it mm -hmm. or connect the dots. So I'm just glad to have you here to even have people take that moment to think about, look over their shoulder, mm -hmm. see what's happened, and think about where you're going with all that you've done. So for more information on uh, Stillwaters Collective, mm -hmm. they can go to your website, yes. right? Yes, stillwaterscollective.com. That's real simple to remember, stillwaterscollective.com. Mm -hmm. And you've got this huge event that's mm -hmm. coming up on Thursday, April 11th, mm -hmm. at the Marcus Center for the Performing Arts. Yes. Uh, it's titled, it's a long title, so I'll try to get it right. <laughs> home, an exploration of sovereignty, history, and home, featuring Kima Hamilton and Dasha Kelly Hamilton. Yes. Kima being your husband. My husband. Yay. So, Tell us about this. Really excited about this show. We are actually representing it. It started, um, we did a first version of it with a Fringe Festival a few summers ago. And it's a discussion about coming into someone's home. So we have this discussion about this city being segregated. And I had a friend that moved to New York for some years and came back and moved to a different part of town and thought, oh, now I can appreciate how this city can be at the same time on the best place to live and the worst place to live. Mm. So how can those two things be true at the same time? And our homes, wherever we physically locate in this city that we call home is gonna be a different experience. In this nation that we all call home, also a different experience. So how to capture all of that um, and not just and not just as an artistic endeavor, but to really prompt conversation. So it's this uh, multi-genre experience where the audience is essentially dropping in at our house, and we're talking about you know uh, my husband describes coming home from work and he goes to observe a court case, mm -hmm. and the person sitting next to him is in a suit, and then before you know it, this guy in a suit is called up next to be a defendant, you know, in this pretrial, mm -hmm. and then a door opens and he's describing a, a guy comes in who's shackled and who's also having the same experience so does this mean that one had the money to get an attorney and the other one didn't if they're both presumed innocent mm -hmm. why are they both presenting at this pretrial in two different ways and so the 
production goes from us having this conversation about what all that means. When the, um, the March on 50th anniversary was last year, we were able to be a partner in that experience at 200 Nights of Freedom, mm -hmm. um, which commemorated the 200 walk, the 200 day walk. And we were one of the productions that fell into that window. Mm -hmm. So it was a perfect addition. We were able to, we're working in footage from Vel Phillips speaking at a Common Council um, assembly where she's making the case. We're able to work in specifically um, Milwaukee as home. So some of those uh, multimedia pieces. So there's a trumpet player and a dancer and a singer wow. and there's a visual art. So all these different. It's senses. a real production. It's a real production. <laughs> Yes. And, the, and the talk back is a talk with, a conversation with the audience is part of the production as well. All right, so it's in commemoration of Milwaukee's Fair Housing March. It's in re Rehearsal Hall A mm -hmm. on the fourth floor at the Marcus Center. Those tickets are just $20, mm -hmm. and of course they can go to marcuscenter.org for more details. Yep. But you mentioned uh, the late, great Val Phillips. Uh, she introduced the first Fair Housing bill to the um, Milwaukee Common Council back in 1962 and was instrumental with the help of many people um, in seeing that through by mm -hmm. 1967. So when you highlight um, this Fair Housing March, uh, what stood out most to you in putting this production together? Mm, wanted to move past the facts. Um, wanted to move past um, the incidents of things that happened. Mm -hmm. So a lot of, I feel that we're at a space where we've moved beyond understanding what is, mm -hmm. of gathering data of what has happened. But because we were in that mode for so long, um, we need to shift now to making sense of what needs to happen next. Mm. So in that vein, it's this is what we know in terms of the history. We know that this is a piece of Milwaukee history that most Milwaukee students have not been taught. It's not a part of the curriculum. Most adults are not aware that this national um, movement began here and that raises a lot of questions and conversations all on its own. Mm. Um, so, so to get to a space where it's less of what was this about, and even why it happened. So what where do now? we go from Where do here? we go from here? And a lot it. of it was people seeing themselves in the story in a different way. So a lot of the feedback we got from the initial run were people sharing, I, I hadn't considered that. Or when you see the impact of this, of a decision or a lack of a decision, how that impacts one family in a neighborhood, in a city, and how we are all complicit. Um, and, is, and not talking about it and not knowing about it in being in this age of study. Uh, mm. we're, and I've been saying for the last, I would say a year, we're past asking each other, what is this thing? Um, <laughs> we should stop asking that and, and really share and have everybody be a part of the dialogue as okay. well. I love that. You make a great point. And I did mention that April is National mm -hmm. Poetry yep. Month. So in a nutshell, uh, how has poetry influenced your journey in man, life? <laughs> man, man, man. Um, in a way, a poem, a great poem will be, it's been unexpected. Um, it has been uh, humbling and it has been fulfilling all in the same bite. Mm -hmm. So I hated poetry. I was one of those <laughs> kids coming through like, why are we being tortured with this unit? And the way I was introduced to poetry was always a puzzle. So there's a deeper meaning, there's a significance, there's read between the lines, and this these set of words don't really mean that, it means something else. And I was used to interpretive literature, but in a poem it just added an extra layer of frustration. Oh, um, but wow. going to an open mic and hearing a person I can look at and they're telling their story and their, their language and they're all different ways that people came to those mics. It helped me appreciate the form and then I was able to appreciate how, how, to, how to have a conversation with a poem on the page over these years. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's watching all these people tell their stories. Okay. For me, it's been um, the, the small thing that I also would have never imagined myself doing. It, I'm, I'm also walking the story of there's so much that you don't know of yourself, there's so much that we don't acknowledge about ourselves, and it doesn't have to be anything else but for you. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be anything else but for expression or just because you can. So in fact, through National Poetry Month, there's a challenge, a national challenge of folks, poets and non-poets alike, it's a 30-30. So can you crank out a poem every day for, you know, every day for the course of a month? Yeah, I have, I've made it to the end only once. Only once ever. So by the by, wow. the, by the fifteenth, they're haikus. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so I think that when we talk about your journey, uh, poetry has allowed you to travel the globe. As yeah. I mentioned, uh, you facilitated transformational programs and discussions throughout the U.S., Canada, mm -hmm. Botswana, mm -hmm. Beirut. Mm -hmm. You've gone to places I can't even pronounce. So. <laughs> 
Uh -huh. And of course, you've appeared on Deaf Poetry Jam. You've been named uh, Milwaukee Artist of the Year and was the first American artist in residence invited to Lebanon's uh, university. How do you even? Rafiki Hariri. Rafiki Hariri. Hariri. Mm -hmm. All right. So this is just what it has created a path yes. for you. And I think it goes without saying, Milwaukee, so proud of you Thank and you. all that you continue to do when you travel and represent this great city. So we thank you and thank we you. wish you continued success. Let's do that. Yes. <laughs> thank Let's you so that. much. Dasha Kelly Hamilton is a nationally recognized poet that will again be performing Home, an exploration of sovereignty, history, and home featuring Kima Hamilton and Dasha Kelly Hamilton. That's happening again Thursday, April 11th at 7.30 p.m. in Rehearsal Hall A at the Marcus Center for the Performing Arts. For ticket information, visit MarcusCenter.org or call 414-273-7121. And that is going to do it for today's show. I'm your host, Andrea Williams. As always, thank you for watching. And I do hope you join us again next week as we take another look at Our Issues Milwaukee. Have a great day.